but the pressure and counter pressure to help the midfield possess the ball and Dallin Radar will need to provide a platform to launch that attack. Duke wearing white on their home field, North Carolina in that distinctive Carolina blue. So let's love the game from Koskinen Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. Duke with possession to begin. Al Piper looking pretty quickly toward that front line. Count Raider, the intended target. There is Jenaba Endow. JJ, they call her, number three, who gets to start up top with Raider. Cam Roller, the freshman who stepped into that starting center back role for the Blue Devils. Pops it up and over the top, and Ellie, Emmy Allen has her first touch. And we're going to see that a little bit more from the Blue Devils tonight, especially from Cam Roller. Great range of pass. She can stretch teams with the ability to play Endal Radar in behind the back line of North Carolina. North Carolina gets it up to Tori Della Peruta, has now started two straight up top for the Tar Heels. Karina Laguerre. Number 16, can't keep possession. Emily Colton, now to Patterson. Patterson so composed on the ball, gets her shot across, and the outside flag is up. Nina Freeman holding her position, protecting that goal regardless. Well, that all started from a careless giveaway from Duke. That led to their undoing in their last game against Pitt. But Avery Patterson, just so silky smooth on the ball, gets her head up looking for the run of Della Peruta, falls conveniently to Moxley. But Leah Freeman, assertive start to the game, coming out aggressive and big, making the goal look really small for those Tar Heels. Sam Meza, more of a defensive role this year for the Tar Heels, but so important there in the middle now. Ali Sentinor, six goals, two assists on the season, gets a shot off with the left. Yeah, she's got that in her pocket all day long. And that's where Ali Sentinor really likes to come to life in the space, in the pocket, between the lines. She's got an enviable combination of pace and exceptional control here. She picks it up off of Meza into Moxley. Sentinor making that run into the wide channel. She takes that intelligent touch laterally to central areas. That gives her a more threatening position to unleash from distance. But Leah Freeman equal to the task using her long frame to extend her range and make the save. Here comes the corner. Emily Moxley putting the first corner in play for the Tar Heels, and now it is out for a goal kick. Robbie Church, 23rd season on the sidelines with the Blue Devils, winning his coach in program history, two-time ACC Coach of the Year. And while he has had so much success, has Never been able to beat North Carolina here on his home field, looking for that first win, perhaps this afternoon. Free kick coming here for North Carolina. Corey Rockwell, our referee. Certainly dangerous territory here, Jill, for Moxley. All those targets lining up for North Carolina. Good ball from Moxley, but driving in a little too close, and Freeman takes it over. And Leah Freeman allows this Duke team to play in a different way. She can play those longer passes with accuracy, with texture in behind the back line of the Tar Heels, but it is her ability to protect the goal area. Such an impactful presence. And typically when she can pluck the balls out of the air, it's because teams are forward, they've filled the box in the key zones, and they're primed and ready to be countered on. North Carolina looking to attack through that right side, but Nikki Chico recovering defensively. Raider, last year's ACC Freshman of the Year, wearing number two in white up top for Duke. Perhaps having to carry a lot more of the offensive load this season. Robbie Church has talked about trying to take some of that pressure off of her.
good touch. Ali Sentinor gets it right back to Meza. And just a little bit of a misplay there from Sam Meza. But I've enjoyed watching her evolution to become a more of a holding midfielder. And, and there's a difference between a holding midfielder and a deep line playmaker. And she is the quintessential deep line playmaker. She picks up the ball in clever areas where she now has a little bit more space to maneuver and meander through traffic, looking to draw players to her before she unleashes that incisive pass into the final third. Meza, an All-American last year for the Tar Heels. And to your point, has seen quite an evolution in her time here, senior this year. And, and the stats really don't do her justice and they don't really reflect her value to this team, but she has an upward positive trajectory from this midfield and the most accurate passes into the final third for this Tar Heel team. And you mentioned the difference that Leah Freeman has made in goal for Duke, what she allows them to do. Transfer this year coming in from Oregon where she was three-year starter. Ranks number one all-time at Oregon in both shutouts and goals against average. Savvy King, a really tremendous freshman, stepping in the center of that back three. Great to see Macy Bell back, by the way. She did not play in Thursday night's game against Miami. And Savvy King, number three, had shifted over to that right-hand slot where Macy Bell now is back. Shorts, Jen Hildreth, former U.S. goalkeeper Jill Lloyden. Happy to have you with us now. No score so far. Series history heavily in favor of the Tar Heels, but you're going to find that with most teams in the series history for North Carolina, obviously with the incredible legacy that this program has. Last meeting between these two teams came in the ACC tournament semifinals. That was 0-0-2, but you can't sit at a draw in the postseason. So it went to penalties. North Carolina advanced and made their way to the ACC championship game. But this is such an important matchup, Jill. Obviously, North Carolina unbeaten thus far in the season, trying to stay at the top of the ACC and toward the RPI. And for Duke, winless their last four, trying to get into that top six and keep their postseason hopes alive. Nothing solidified, even though they are ranked at the moment. Good step from Bailey Brewster. Now to Cat Raider, leading scorer for the Blue Devils, has some support. Grace Watkins back on the field. Did not play in the Virginia match for Duke, who's dealing with an injury. And to your point, Jen, this is a, a Duke team that is capable. They have a lot of attacking firepower. They just have wobbled in form in their last few games tonight. I'm looking for them to just kind of get back to the basics, make, make the simple things matter the most in terms of be mistake-free and build up, have options to the ball carry to break down the press, be really good in their individual battles in both boxes, and see if they can play, set play through the midfield diamond. Meza leaving defenders in her wake, but at the end, she left the ball there too, got stuck behind her, good defending in the end by Duke. And Meza wins it right back. All-American for North Carolina last year, number 10 in the lighter shade of blue. Emerson Elgin, part of that back three for North Carolina. Elgin, Savvy King in the middle, Macy Bell, who will receive it now on the right. And while North Carolina has been fairly consistent, Jill, they've shifted as needed with their formation, Duke 
has had to tinker with things a little bit, trying to get themselves back in form. A tough go of it this last four. Patterson. Evelyn Shores has it on her right foot, but puts it well wide of the goal. And in terms of formation, Jen, this year we see North Carolina play in that three, box three, essentially, with a 3-4-3. Three, three. They've moved one of their outside backs into the midfield. And this is a trend that we've seen all over the world with some of the best teams and the best clubs in the world want to provide a little bit more stability in the midfield and outnumber opponents. In the early 2000s, we saw a lot of 4-4-2s, and then we saw 4-3-3 three, three evolve to have that numerical advantage centrally. Now we're seeing a lot more from the box midfield. Is there, Jill, a vulnerability to this formation, though, if you're playing it? You can play this formation if you have the right three center backs to play it, and North Carolina do. They have Macy Bell, Savvy King, and Emerson Elgin, who are so athletic. They are good in the recovery. They play high and aggressive. That allows their team to push higher up and counter press, keep possession, and fatigue teams with a high volume of passes. Now, for Duke, if they can exploit that and bypass that press, there's going to be space for them to play make. And we've seen that in the early moments of this match. It seemed a, a real point of emphasis for Duke looking to get up and over that first line of pressure, as you said, and get behind the back line. No success yet, though. Well, it's both. We want to. They want to play in behind North Carolina's back line, but they can play in front of that back line too if Raider and Endow can provide that structure to hold the ball and then play back to the midfield, allow numbers to get forward so that they can keep possession. This is a, a Duke team that completes and attempts over 500 passes a game. That's who they are. They want to possess the ball. They cannot rely on just getting into track meets with North Carolina because North Carolina win every time. Good effort there from Shores to win the ball for North Carolina. Taking a hit for it in the end. Ask Megan if she has her uh, Tar Heels 9-0 oh, and 4 on the season coming in. 4-0 oh, and 1 in conference play. Coming into the day, Florida State and Notre Dame both ahead of North Carolina in the standings as they picked up victories earlier today. Duke 5 4 2, 1 2 and 2 in the conference. And you can see there's, there's no impetus for Duke to get any higher in that line of confrontation than they are right now, at least not at the moment. Hovering just past midfield, really. Emily Colton. Had her first goal of the season on Thursday, game winner against Miami. That scoreline was just one nothing in favor of the Tar Heels, but the shots would tell you a much different story. 20 to one in favor of North Carolina, nine to nothing shots on goal. Blue Devils will certainly have their hands full trying to get a good look at Emmy Allen's goal today, North Carolina has been equally as tough to break down as they've been successful getting into the attacking third and getting shots off. They've only conceded seven goals on the season, three of those coming from 1v1 situations where teams get in over that press and try to challenge those three center backs who sometimes take some risks to get higher up into the attack. Opponents quickly transition and take advantage of the unbalanced opponent. It's one of those moments that remind you that, yes, this is indeed a rivalry. <laughs> Duke and North Carolina. Foul called. North Carolina will take the free kick. Sentinor out to Patterson. Shores. Raider having to come pretty deep on the field to pick up the ball for Duke. There is pressure and the illusion of pressure, both of which you have to contend with if you're facing North Carolina. And the Tar Heels not afraid to put those defenders 
under some duress. Good step forward by Cam Roller. Meza back onto it. One quick touch to the right, but the due defense where it needed to be. Nikki Chico, Robbie Church telling me before the match, one of the real emotional leaders of this Duke team, a senior out of New Jersey, really in a primary starting role for the first time this season. She's bided her time, has been an important player off the bench over her last few years. But this is a Duke team accustomed to being in the postseason, finding success. Their schedule absolutely brutal, as it is for most teams going through the Atlantic Coast Conference, but you know they've got to pick up some points in a hurry. Emmy Allen in goal for North Carolina. And it was interesting talking to Robbie Church yesterday about how some other teams have found some success against this North Carolina team. He talked about Florida State and, and their two front as well as Alabama and South Carolina changing their formation, South Carolina, to play a little bit higher, put more pressure on this North Carolina team and not allow them to build through the thirds and dominate in possession. Ooh, Ali Sentinor was just putting on a show there. Spinning, dancing through defenders. And you probably heard that a little bit, the crowd here in front of us, very well filled in in both shades of blue, I might add. And Duke still without a couple of key pieces. Emily Royson, Olivia Migley still out. Those are two of the injuries that they took in the Notre Dame match, which came September 21st. They gave up two goals in the dying minutes of that match, and it, I think, has had a bad trickle-down effect. Watkins had to pull it back. Piper stepping onto it now for Duke. Piper, the only one to receive it there is a the goalkeeper. And that's better for Duke, putting pressure on Macy Bell, trying to intercept the ball and then go forward. And they're getting numbers joining quickly into that final third. Now it's that last decision. Can they keep it a little bit longer, not really settle for those crosses that aren't really challenging. They didn't have players in the box. They don't really have that big aerial presence. This is a, a Duke team that wants to keep it and find themselves with incisive little combinations on the top of the box to enter into the penalty area to try to have a look on frame. Patterson. Making her way to the middle, goes back to Bell. Jill, is there anything you'd like to see from North Carolina to have the game go a little bit more to their liking? I would love to see them stretch out the field a little bit more, use those wingers to occupy those, those wide areas and see if they can get Duke's outside backs to bite. That's gonna crack open the half space where those double tens can get into, and then they can penetrate Duke's back line to get into the final third. But right now they're just playing in front and central areas and it's really tight and congested. Meza. Two defenders around. And then we'll eventually just go back to King. Elgin, the left back. Still good numbers in the box. Tori Della Peruta gets knocked down. This is going to be a free kick. For all intents and purposes, a short corner for North Carolina. Third foul against the Blue Devils. And let's see what Emily Moxley can do with this. We know how Setna really comes to life on top of the box. We've seen her do it this season with the shots from outside the box. Yeah, I asked Anson Dorrance if she dented the crossbar with one of her <laughs> shots from Thursday night against Miami. I mean, there is some wicked power <laughs> off valid. both feet. Yeah, valid question. <laughs> 
So far, though, really pretty even between these two teams. Good chance brewing for Duke. But the ball goes wanting. Maggie Graham got into a really good space. This is much better from Duke. They build up one side, go out the other side with Watkins. She gets squared up against Macy Bell, and that opens up the space for Graham to get into in the advanced half space. Duke just can't get numbers in the box to threaten goal. But those are the mo moments that Graham wants to take another second, have that awareness that there aren't runners in the box, keep it, recycle possession, see if they can be more threatening. Still scoreless with about 20 minutes gone by in our first half. And Jill, you've mentioned it a couple times the, the double pivots, double sixes holding midfielders for North Carolina, the double tens is attacking mids as this one's turned over. That puts a lot of bodies central with the formation. As let's see what Watkins and Duke can do with this. They're going to force Allen at least to make the save. effort there and, and these are two goalkeepers that are the best not only in this conference but the country in my opinion two of the top shot stoppers great presence protect the goal area really well good good presence and aggressiveness off their lines it's going to take something special to beat them Colton so where does that width come from? That's kind of what I was trying to get to with North Carolina. The way that box sets up, there's a lot of bodies central. You want width. Where does North Carolina get it? This one, though, right up the middle. And this North Carolina team just has to read what their teammates are doing. The whole style hinges on your teammates' positioning, your positioning with the ball. So whether it's those wingers of Patterson and Moxley retaining the width, or if they come on the interior, then it's Setnor getting wider or Shores in the in the wider area. They need to pull this pull this 4-4-2 diamond apart, stretch them. Boy, Roller had to play that just right. She did put just enough on it as Della Peruta was there. Katie Groff, number 21, one of the seniors for this Duke team. Couldn't keep possession. And the double pivot pulls Duke forward. That brings the midfield forward. And the back line, the attacking line of North Carolina want to stretch the back line. That opens up the space for those double tens to get in little pockets where they can get on the half turn, run at the back line. They just need to speed up their tempo just a little bit more, North Carolina. Shores, freshman out of Atlanta, making her sixth start of the season. Anson Dorrance has been really impressed with what she has brought, as were you, Jill, talking with Anson earlier today. Moxley. We'll have to try to collect this ball herself. tell you about our primetime Thursday night ACC women's soccer matchup coming up and Thursday it is the only one on the schedule so you have no excuse tune in 
<laughs> number two, Florida State, hosting number 11, Notre Dame, at the Seminole Soccer Complex in Tallahassee. Coverage kicks off at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. I will be there, yes, ma'am. You're going to tune in? <laughs> okay, I sold you on it. <laughs> I, I mean, those two teams right at the top with North Carolina in the ACC, both picking up big win scoring a ton of goals earlier today we'll catch you up on some of the other acc action at halftime is there any surprise for you jill has even as this one has been so far or is this about what you would have expected Nothing about what I expected north carolina just patient in their possession trying to circulate the ball and just really fatigue Duke with a high volume of passes. Just like to see them use the width a little bit more. And Duke, once they do get a hold of the ball, they've had some longer stints of possession in some sequences. Now it's just it's just been a question, the magic question all year is can they turn those sequences and that possession into more quality dangerous opportunities? Go, go, go. Turnover here, can Raider take advantage? Back to Karina Laguerre. Duke got the memo about using the width. A little too much that time, though. Turn it over out of bounds. Katie Groff, longtime Duke legacy in her family. Five family members went to Duke, including both her parents who met here. And Duke's possession equally as important, not only to create quality chances for them, but it also gives them an opportunity to, to stunt and blunt North Carolina's attack because they want the ball. They want to dominate the ball and manipulate their opponent to create opportunities. So if Duke can keep the ball for longer sequences and they have territory, they don't need to go to goal. And that causes less turnovers and they have to defend less. Cat Raider delivering this ball into the box. And Duke ready to make some subs. Mia Minestrella and Kati Drazina, the two coming on for the Blue Devils. So Minestrella will step in up top for Endow. And then Kati Drazina coming on for Grace Watkins in the attack. Transfer from Notre Dame Drazina. No changes yet for North Carolina, but that line change, it is a coming. This is a staple under Anson Dorrance, who feels he has plenty of talented, game-changing players who start his games on the bench. Looks like there are six, maybe seven, getting ready to come on for North Carolina. They're not being waved in yet, though, from Corey Rockwell. Watkins actually still out there for Duke. On the ball now. That change hasn't yet happened with Druzina. So Watkins is the number that will be up on the board when Druzina comes in. But at the moment, Grace Watkins still out there. changes for North Carolina. So we'll get you caught up on all of these numbers. Alina Rabimbus, Tessa Delarose, Izzy Cox, Kate Fossey, Talia Della Peruta, Maddie Deline, and Bella Sember, all of your changes for North Carolina. And essentially then, Jill, that is every 
player on the field except for the back three and the goalkeeper. I mean, all of these players on North Carolina, this is a, a team with an abundance of talent, not only in their starting 11, but it's on their bench, coming off the bench to impact this game. And that's one of the harder things for opponents to deal with because it's so fatiguing. Now you're coming in and having to play against players that are, have fresh legs, have seen the way that you want to play, seen the spaces that they want to attack. So difficult to play against for 90 minutes. So let's see if this makes a change, makes a difference for these final 15 minutes of the first half. Cox will be the player up top where Tori De La Peruta was. And then across that middle, Dalene, Rabimbus, Sember, Fossey left to right. De La Rose and Talia De La Peruta, the two holding midfielders. Macy Bell. Such a big loss for North Carolina last season after an All-American season in 2021. Now Duke with a chance on the break. Raider to Minestrella. And my, how quickly that space is closed down by North Carolina. Keep it, keep it here, keep it here. Good. Take it. Flag actually came up as Raider came from an offside position to receive the ball. It is a pretty packed house here at Koskinen Stadium this afternoon. Both shades of blue, well represented for this matchup between Duke and North Carolina, a rematch of the ACC semifinal from 2022. Needed overtime and penalty kicks to decide that one in North Carolina's favor. You won't get that in the regular season. The regular season meeting last year went 3 0 in favor of North Carolina. So Tar Heels were able to claim a share of the ACC regular season title along with Florida State. King looking to get it up to her front line. And there is a ton of speed, maybe even a little more speed, Jill, especially on the wings with some of these players and Fossey and Darlene who've come on. But we've got some VIPs in the crowd today. Tess Bodie, Duke Blue Devils. And uh, she has a pretty memorable moment. Last time Duke beat the number one ranked team. Well, she had the game winner. It was in 2021 against number one Florida State. We see Brianna Pinto, Emily Fox. Caroline and Marissa Bova. <laughs> Can I get their autograph? I, I, I bet at halftime you can <laughs> run down and ask. Double down, double. Tess Bodie, I think was the ringleader in trying to get the tickets and playing in the NWSL, the North Carolina Courage, picking up a point last night in front of a record crowd just down the road in Cary, North Carolina, over 10,000 in attendance. And we've seen that across the National Women's Soccer League over these last few matches of course the all-time NWSL attendance record was set on Friday night in Seattle Megan Rapinoe's last regular season home match for OL Reign that league coming down to its final few regular season matches and the ACC and both of these schools very well represented across the National Women's Soccer League I think you got to see one Michelle Cooper in action last night right Jill Oh my goodness, she is so fun to watch and now I know why the, the Duke Blue Devils miss her so much. She's so influential and she's evolved her game. She's moved down to the wing position from a, a natural number nine here at Duke and just impacting the game and it's such a bright future ahead of her. Herman Trophy winner a year ago for Duke, leaving early to begin her professional career, Michelle Cooper. You know, sometimes when you take on North Carolina, and Robbie Church talked about this this week, withstanding that first punch that comes in the first 10, 15 minutes is often so important. Duke has done that. And I think equally more important for this Duke team right now in the form that they've been in. And he talked so much about how the team needs to continue to have confidence and there needs to be 
a, a concerted effort to keep the ball and be brave in moments. Could have an opportunity right here. Still good numbers for Duke, the shot, but in the end, a really easy save right into the gloves of Emmy Allen. They've gotten so much of the work done, Jill, the couple opportunities they've had, but then you just sort of feel let down with the final result. I th think they can just be a bit more patient in the final third. They're just settling for low percentage opportunities when they can keep it a little bit more. We're talking about one of the best possession teams in the country with some of the most pressure resistant central players that can one touch combine around teams. Now they just need to continue to try that right now. Just looks like they're settling and rather just sit back and hang back and defend a little bit more. The numbers will tell you that Duke has outshot North Carolina so far in this match, four to three. But to your point, the shots have not been of the quality that I think Duke would really like to do a better job of testing Emmy Allen in the Tar Heel defense. Ball intercepted. Chico stepping in to win it for Duke, and now the free kick coming for the Blue Devils. And you can see the idea there, what Bella Sember was trying to do from that central position, long diagonal out to the width to relieve that pressure and get it out to the isolated winger. This intercept it gives Duke an opportunity on the turnover. Brewster with Cox bearing down. Izzy Cox just made her 100th career appearance on Thursday night for North Carolina. That is a number that leads all active players in the country. Senior from Greensboro coming off the bench. Last couple of seasons for the Tar Heels. can see Duke really does make use of Leah Freeman and goal, don't they, as just a pressure release, resetter of distribution. And we're going to see that more and more as time goes on. I think the goalkeeper position is one that he's evolved the most from just a traditional pure shot stopper to as an 11th field player. That gives you a numerical advantage some point in the field. And really against teams that don't high press, that sit in more of a mid block where the goalkeeper can eat up some ground, start the attack from a higher position on the field and that makes their longer passes more accurate in behind which is where Leah Freeman really helps this Duke team. Throw in coming here Savvy King with the clearance Laguerre carrying the ball forward for the Blue Devils. L Piper sophomore out of San Jose California ready with the throw. Cox wins it for North Carolina. Tar Heels begin their march down the field. Rabimbus gives it away. A little bit of contact there from Cox is what brings this ball back to the feet of Della Peruta. Darlene pokes it with her right foot. Doesn't get too much on it. Friday's ACCPM with Mark Packer and Taylor Tannebaum will come to you from right here in Durham as the prep for college football Saturday, highlighted by NC State and Duke. That show starts Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, that game here on ACCN Saturday night at 8. And I think another thing that makes North Carolina so difficult to defend against for 90 minutes is, yes, they bring in players with fresh legs and still the same quality, but different types of profiles. So you had Avery Patterson starting in that wing position. Yes, really influential off the dribble, but a much different type of dribbler than Maddie Deline. And her ability to change speed, stop, start, freeze, and unbalanced defenders is much different contribution than an Avery Patterson will play with. So it makes it really difficult for defenders to understand how to play in those moments. And those moments of uncertainty cause hesitation, which makes defenders slower, and it's more advantageous to the attacking team. 
Raider will pick this up for Duke. Savvy King was pulled out of position. Can Duke take advantage? Maggie Graham falls on the ground. Minestrella will rue that chance not going on target. And the Blue, Devil, Blue Devils still continuing to put pressure on this North Carolina back line, getting some good territory here. Graham just keeps this one alive. It falls conveniently to Minestrella, and she cannot steer this one on frame. It's Cat Radar trying to unleash from distance. Graham keeps it alive. Fortuitous bounce to Minestrella, and she cannot take advantage of that developing situation in front of goal. Those are the moments that the Duke Blue Devils have to put away. I'd say that's the best chance of the half from either team. And really, to be fair, I think you might give the edge to Duke in these first 40 minutes so far. Yeah, North Carolina having a, a large majority of possession in the opening minutes and that one opportunity from Ali Sentinar from, from the get off of the shot from distance that challenged Leah Freeman, but certainly that was a better opportunity. And here comes Duke again. Drazina beaten to the ball. And as Del Prute got back to help defensively for North Carolina. Or Fossey, excuse me, Kate Fossey was the player, sophomore who came back. Raider wanted to turn. this first half rather uncharacteristic for North Carolina in a number of ways mentioned it earlier but Duke actually out shooting the Tar Heels in this first half and even in the games that have been tight for North Carolina look at what they typically do how much they out shoot their opponents not today not yet Maybe a little skewed for this North Carolina team. This is typically a team in the second half that double their production from the first half. So that will be something that Duke has to be mindful of going into that second half of finding the balance of pushing for a goal because this really could be a turning point in their season if they can get a positive result, but also not exposing themselves too much defensively. Devin Lynch coming on for Laguerre for Duke. And you know, if I remember correctly, I think NC State actually had gotten a good number of shots off in the first half. They liked the way they played their first 45 minutes against North Carolina, but that one finished for nothing in favor of the Tar Heels. NC State picking up a big win earlier today. And as a reminder, we'll catch you up on some of those other ACC scores and highlights at the half. some width for North Carolina. Fossey now cutting in. It's where the defense waits. She keeps it though. the middle. Rabimbus with a couple of defenders around her just unable to keep it. Maggie Graham is down for Duke so Corey Rockwell is going to pause things just over a minute to play in the first half to go check on her. Senior from Atlanta. Graham name should be very familiar to Duke women's soccer fans. Delaney Graham had such a tremendous career here, and Maggie getting to play with her older sister the last couple of years. Hey, 
Duke has grown into this first half. Can they take advantage of it? Good defending. Back three of North Carolina, so tough to get past. Under 30 seconds left in half number one from Durham. Scoreless between Duke and North Carolina. Let's see if Savvy King tries to force it. Or maybe one last shot. Doesn't look like it. Macy Bell is going to keep it at her feet and keep that scoreline, Jill. 0-0. Zero, zero. All the credit goes to Duke in this first half. They defended in that 4-2-4 and made it really difficult, which has opened up opportunities from distance or inside the box. But those outside backs do like to get forward and Duke vulnerable in transition in those areas and on crossing situations. Off we go to start the second half now. North Carolina in Carolina blue, moving from left to right. Across the field, Duke in the white tops, blue shorts. Looking to pick up where they left off in the first half. And it looks like each team, Jill, making at least one change in terms of the 11 that started the match to who's going to start the second half. Mia Minestrella, number 13, gets the start in the second half in the attack up top with Cat Raider for Duke, but here comes North Carolina. Patterson is offside. Kate Fossey does get the start on the right-hand side in place of Emily Moxley in that Tar Heel formation. Kate Fossey is just a speed merchant. She allows this North Carolina team to stretch Duke, play in behind that back line, which Coach Anson Doran said at halftime could be an option that they look to take advantage of. Kate Fossey's the perfect player on the edge to be able to do that. Here's Minestrella. Savvy King knew exactly where Count Raider, the reigning ACC freshman of the year, was intercepting the pass. Here's Fossey on the ball. Met immediately by the player Robbie Church. Highlighted Nikki Chico and the defensive work she's done. But Fossey giving her all she can handle and then some right now. Sentinel pokes it through. Fossey. Macy Bell coming up, manages to win it back. She'll serve it into the box, but right into the gloves of Freeman. It looks like a clear concerted effort for this Tar Heel team to retain the width. Kate Fossey really stretching apart. Duke's back line creating those openings. It looks like they're trying to recruit all of the Duke players to one side, pin them into one side to isolate on the other and take advantage of space on the opposite side. Not a great clearance from Emmy Allen. It flies under the leg of Watkins. Meza there to help clean things up. over to Elgin. Elgin given a free path forward right now for North Carolina, and she's going to take it. Colton had it tapped away by Maggie Graham. And you can see Fossey continues to come, get her heels on that sideline. Sentinor runs into a block of Blue Devils. Fossey. Mia. Mia. King now. Step up, step up. King. 
Graham had it for a moment. Now Minestrella has Raider. Leading pass in those long strides of Macy Bell are going to be first to the ball. North Carolina's back line is just playing on the edge of their final third when they progress the ball in. And this is a North Carolina team that is high risk, high reward. But those are moments that Duke have to take full advantage of in transition. Once they win the ball, create those turnovers, can they take advantage of North Carolina's attack that's just so high? Yeah, you want to make them pay, right? But at the same time, you said it earlier, North Carolina is able to play the way they do in large part because of those three in the back. And you just saw how Macy Bell just eats up space. Offside flag is up here against North Carolina. But all it does is take one moment, one moment where they're out of position. Maybe they make a, a misjudgment in terms of how high they can be and the recovery that they can make in behind. And those are the moments that Duke's going to be looking to take full advantage of especially through Cat Raider. It's one of many moments, if you're being truthful, that if you're Duke, you miss the presence of a Michelle Cooper because I'm not sure there was a better player in the country who could take advantage of a high line like that in space with her ability to read and get into dangerous positions. Graham, good combinations here from the Blue Devils in the box out for Raider. Offside, though, would take this away anyway. It's going back to North Carolina. And here's a look back. That's that central little combination play that Duke likes to rely on so often. They suck North Carolina's defense inside in those central areas. That leaves space around the outside where Raiders are trying to take advantage of it. Ultimately, it was deemed offside, but that is where Duke is special. Bella Goes down to the ground, no foul, says Carl Rockwell. There's some more contact. North Carolina still with possession. <laughs> Bell moves it all the way across. This takes a deflection out, and this will be just our second corner kick of the match. Had just one in the first half for the Tar Heels. And this is looking like an enticing matchup as the game goes on. Della Peruta trying to play back to goal. Brewster initiates that contact there, puts her shoulder out, and that's Della Peruta with all the back pressure trying to win the ball back, counter press from a high advanced position. Boy, say what you will about the first foul or not, but it looked like the second interaction could also have been called a foul. Here's the corner. Brewster perhaps may be a bit fortunate, but I will say Corey Rockwell was right there on top of the play, had a good look at it. Tori Della Peruta, three goals, two assists on the season. Anton Dorrance talked about how she's really been playing her way into more starts, more time. Had a game high three shots in Thursday night's win against Miami, all three of those shots on goal. She uses her body so well to get in between defenders and the ball, sees little pockets of space, can roll defenders to create shots for herself or really good in combination play as well. She's not that traditional out and out striker, although she does have the frame for it. She's more intelligent, creative than that. Now the foul is called. a little move here as Avery Patterson who ultimately brings down Katie Groff and puts Duke in a position of potential from this set piece. It's been a, a relatively clean match thus far. Seven fouls in total. I imagine that was what the Blue Devils were looking for from that set piece. Gear touches it wide. This will be a deep throw in for Duke. Emmy Allen called upon to make a couple of saves in the first half, two of them for North Carolina.
Daniel Piper ready with the throw in. Minestrella with two Tar Heel defenders around her and earns her team its first corner kick of the match. North Carolina, since that Florida State game in particular, has done a lot of work defensively on corner kicks. But this is an area you'd have to imagine Duke, when scouting for this game, is trying to take advantage of. Piper punches in, punched away. Back up and over, hanging in the air. Maggie Graham off the ponytail. <laughs> Doesn't get too much, and out of bounds it goes. Women's soccer continues tonight with a rivalry matchup in the SEC as Ole Miss and Mississippi State compete for the Magnolia Cup. The Bulldogs looking for their fourth straight win in the series, while the Rebels try to win in Starkville for the first time since 2014. That game kicks off at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, over on ESPNU. North Carolina forced back. Now they get the cross off. Patterson back to Meza. Sentinor. Meza, an uncharacteristic heavy touch, gave it away. Remember, North Carolina the number one team in the country right now. But even Anson Dorrance said to us, look, we, this team knows they're not invincible. They know they can be beat on any given day. They haven't been blowing out all of their opponents. It's just a one goal game on Thursday night. I thought Sentinor was gonna pull the trigger on that one. Instead, she lays it off. And just a big clearance up the field from Cameron Roller. Great deception from Sentinor in that tight, congested area as he tried to wiggle through Duke's central midfield, but good defending ultimately by Cameron Roller on Avery Patterson. Boy, Tori Della Perucha was just wide open and calling for it in the middle of the field. Either North Carolina didn't see it or didn't think they could get the service to her. Chico with an onslaught of Tar Heels coming at her. Fossey heads it down. Sentinor. Del Pruta bodied off the ball. Patterson. Colton. A mid-block, Anson Doran said he felt Duke was playing, that North Carolina was really having difficulty unlocking and calling all these names. And there are so many talented attacking players. And really credit to Duke that we've not been able to see any of them really get loose in this match. Well, it was the mid-block in the first half. Now North Carolina looks like, looks like they've solved that. And now that's forced Duke a little bit deeper in their defensive third. They've got 11 players in their defensive third right now, which is making it difficult for them to find a way out in transition. And because of that, that's really muted their ability to go forward and challenge in their final third. You have to believe, though, and there's a lot of time obviously left, Duke, a tie is not what they're going for here. Yes, right now it may be a very defensive stance. There's a shot!
and what a moment for Emily Colton. It's North Carolina attacking in those wide spaces. Colton just positioning herself in an area of uncertainty for Duke's back line. Not sure who should step. That gives space for Colton to unleash from distance as it just kisses off the crossbar and tucks away into the side netting. An incredible, stunning goal from Colton from distance. And that is worth all the probing for the Tar Heels. Second goal of the season, second goal in as many matches for Emily Colton, who had the game winner on Thursday night in that one nothing win against Miami. Don't really think a draw was in the cards for Duke to begin with. Now, they've got their work to do just to get it even again here in Durham. And does this open things up for North Carolina? Della Peruta goes down to the ground. And there is no whistle. There were some yellow cards coming out in the stands in front of us, but not a foul <laughs> called from the actual referee, Corey Rockwell, on that play. It came from half the fans here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. North Carolina did travel well down the road <laughs> to Durham. And now another chance from distance. Not really too difficult off the bounce. And here's a look back at that opportunity. Great reverse pass from Meza. And Sentinor just revels in that space between the lines where she can receive it on the half turn. Gets her head up, looks for Della Peruta in behind. Della Peruta feels that contact from Piper. Maybe goes to ground a bit too easy, which is what Corey Rockwell saw. Patterson gets herself past one defender. Now says, who wants it? It's a little too far away from Colton, though. Avery Patterson, one of those players that Anson Jordan says always seems to rise to the occasion. She certainly played big in the NCAA tournament. Remember North Carolina going all the way to the championship game last year for four, losing in absolutely heartbreaking fashion. Thought they had the win. 16 seconds left against UCLA. Concede off a corner kick, go to overtime, and lose that match in the end. But Patterson had a big NCAA tournament for the Tar Heels. And she is vital to this North Carolina attack. It's her movement that allows for space for Colton to get into. And so Patterson gets high. She retains the wish. She draws that outside back. And that creates the space that Colton was able to get into to have that window to shoot from. Minestrella brings us down for Duke. Well, just hanging around in the attacking third now. Piper will take it from outside the area. I mean, Allen back in goal, did not play Thursday night. North Carolina and Hanson Dorans opting to give Nona Reason the start. Got the shutout, didn't face a shot. I think this is one of the hardest jobs in college soccer to do is be a goalkeeper at, at North Carolina. As, a, as someone who is not constantly in the game, you have to be tuned in 90 minutes when your name is called. Make those. Ooh, got to be tuned in right here. Sorry, Jill, that ball. Freeman, lucky that Della Peruta didn't take it and make her pay. But yeah, I see your point. North Carolina has the ball in their attacking third so often. That's its challenge in and of itself when you're not seeing the ball very much. You have to have clarity in, in key moments when teams, especially, are going to try to bypass your press, play in behind you. You have to be able to protect the space behind, as well as you're not going to get played through too often, so teams are going to look to go around. You have to be good at protecting the goal area. <laughs> Leah Freeman having to protect as well as North Carolina looking a little more direct. It's endurance saying at halftime maybe they needed to think about that a bit more. Vary their attack. Yeah. 
Robbie Church a couple of times has mentioned just this team not bouncing back. I mentioned the number of injuries that they took in that Notre Dame loss where they conceded two goals late in the 86th and 87th minute, wound up losing that one two to one. And since that time, Duke's gone 0-1-2, just seven shots on goal and two goals coming into today. Struggle to regain their form. And it's no easy task to try to do that against your rival, who also happens to be number one in the country. But really, for the most part, in this match today, Duke has done a good job of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with North Carolina. This is a foul against the Tar Heels. And Chico holding her ground, and Duke will take the free kick. Colton gets it forward, Shores has it on her left foot. What's impressed you about Evelyn Shores, Jill, thus far as we do have a player down for Duke? She's everywhere. She's omnipresent everywhere, all over the field. She just pops up. She will slide in and cover for one of those three center backs. She'll get outside in the wide areas and with. She goes higher into the advanced playmaking roles and, and responsibilities like she just did there, trying to find that window to get a shot off of. She's influencing every line of the field and just demands the ball wherever she is. She wants to be an uh, uh, option to the ball carrier to help progress the ball or change the point of attack. Seems to be able to get a shot off or a cross off with just a sliver of space in front of her. I think that has to be on your resume yeah. when, you're, when you're a high school player looking to play at North Carolina. Well, here's Shores again. We'll go out wide, Patterson. Across it comes to Bell. Meza will reset. Shores. Colton, oh, that would have been nice. Patterson, actually, that was. Raider has Watkins. That's where she goes. Grace Watkins has two Tar Heels to get past. Can't do it. North Carolina, 18-0-2 all time when they come to Duke. Looking to improve upon that, stay unbeaten if they can pick up the victory today. Both in their series and in this 2023 season. Sentinor gets it up. Took a little bit of a bounce off a of Blue Devil on the way in. Away, Cam, away. Keep it in. It's ours. We have such a tendency to talk about all the special things Ali Setnor does with the ball because of her attacking tendencies, but she started this attacking sequence for North Carolina by that pressure, that 20 yard sprint that she put on on Duke in their defensive third, win the ball. Now North Carolina is going forward. And Ali Sentinar just embodies such a defensive presence that brings to this team. You don't see that from, from all stars essentially in the attack. 
How about center backs getting up into the attack for North Carolina? Kickstarting this one, still in the box. Colton pushed away by Roar. One change coming now for North Carolina. Cox will replace Della Peruta up top. And whereas we saw the full seven do the exchange in the first half with about 15 minutes left for North Carolina. Just Cox coming on on her own up top in this instance. Fossey caught on her heels just a little bit. Excuse the pun. <laughs> I didn't even mean that one. Usually I, like I acclaim it. them. I like it. <laughs> Gives it to Duke. Too far out of the reach of Piper. Over cooked the bacon a bit. And North Carolina back in control. Is there one thing, Jill, that if you're Duke, you need to do a little bit better right now just to try to find your way toward the goal and even this one up? They really have nothing to lose at this point. So getting 11 players back in the defensive third doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because there's no outlet in transition. There's no way to escape that counter pressure of North Carolina. So I'd like to see Duke take a bit more risk with their forwards, keep them high, and ask some questions of that Tar Heel back line. Now are you going to go as high? Are you going to have the freedom to join in the attack as high as they are? Yeah, we've seen Macy Bell, Savvy King, both getting up into the opposing penalty box. To your point, Watkins is fouled here as she's spun around. And they can do that because of the athleticism that they embody, the anticipation, the reading of the movement of the opposition. And it's here, Macy Bell just getting pressure on Watkins. But they also can do that because of the smart tendencies of the double pivot in Shores and Meza, who can drop in and cover when they see one of those three center backs moving forward. Maggie Graham looking it toward the end line. Good battle for the ball, but Groff loses ultimately, and it'll be a Tar Heel goal kick. Emily Moxley now replacing Fossey. Moxley starting the game in that right wing position for the Tar Heels. Moxley getting the start, or Fossey, excuse me, getting the start in the second half. North Carolina playing with the advantage since the 59th minute. Emily Colton breaking through. It's been a very tight match where Duke still continues to outshoot the Tar Heels. 8 6 overall in this one. Chico. Goes Bell. High up the field, but eventually out of bounds. <laughs> Moxley to Meza. Moxley. Two-woman game there with Moxley and Meza. Nothing doing at the end of it. King still has it on her feet. Savvy King creating some offense for North Carolina. What also has to be on your resume is a two-way player in every position, whether you play in a four-back, a three-back, a center-back, 
you go on attacking forays, and this is Savvy King in the mix in the attacking third, taking on two and three defenders, ultimately earns North Carolina a corner. Third corner kick of the match coming up here from Moxley in North Carolina. Freeman tipping it off the gloves. Did she have it? Oh, she does now. But boy, that got rocky for a few minutes, seconds, truthfully, in real time. Now, she took some contact. The question will be, did she have possession? It looked like she was batting it around for a couple of taps. And here's a look back at that opportunity. North Carolina swings it in, and it's Cox who's putting pressure there on Leah Freeman. Freeman tries to get possession of it. She wasn't fouled. Just a little bit of misjudgment, a little bit too eager to come out and ambitious to win it early and aggressively. I especially appreciate hearing it from you if that's not a foul, because <laughs> I know you'd be standing up for those goalkeepers if you thought it was. Absolutely. I'm a fan of Leah Freeman. I think she's got a, a great toolkit in her arsenal in terms of her presence, her size, her range. Great command of her back line leadership. I look forward to watching her grow, certainly has a pro career ahead of her, if that's the avenue that she wants to take. Raider. Graham up to Watkins. Minestrella Central. Watkins. Three Tar Heels as she tries to get away and can't. Grace Watkins coming back off an injury, did not play in the match against Virginia on the road, which was a 1-1 draw for the Blue Devils. Played 32 minutes on Thursday at Pitt. Talia Della Peruta now coming on for Shores in the midfield for North Carolina. And this one at a time subbing pattern for the Tar Heels just as they're making it a little too easy for us at the moment. <laughs> Used to the big group coming on, but a different approach in the second half, certainly than what we saw in the first half. Piper playing into the shadows. A couple of them still creeping across on that far side of the field. Bigger shadows on the near side here at Koskinen Stadium. Patterson winning it for North Carolina. Cox, who you saw, had that really good effort challenging Leah Freeman off the corner kick. Chico picking out Watkins. Macy Bell, outside of the foot for Cox, in the box she goes, still it's there. Duke keeping <laughs> composure in the box. How can you keep possession when you've got a player like Macy Bell just reading, staying in an elusive position, anticipating while getting the pressure on the back of Watkins, just strips her, picks her pocket, first touches forward, progressive, getting the ball into Cox in that final third and they cannot take advantage of that developing situation, but that is a center back at the highest level, taking a risk, getting pressure on the backside and, and launching an attack. Macy Bell saying she wanted to move outside, typically used to seeing her central. You know, she's been an All-American for North Carolina, but she felt she wanted the experience of being on the outside of that three back, maybe more where you might see her professionally, wanted to develop there. North Carolina continuing to attack with Centnor. Gets it back. Some nervy moments for the Blue Devils defensively, but North Carolina still with nothing more to show from it. Here's Savvy King! <laughs> Come on. Looks like North Carolina has changed to a four back, and I wonder if that's because Coach Anson Doran sees the center backs taking these marauding runs out of the back line. Here is Savvy King intercepting that, having a little space through that tight traffic and congestion, sees the window, opts to go for goal herself. 
Tessie Tessa De La Rose, number 34, came on for Meza in the midfield just a moment ago. It does look like Moxley has dropped back to your point. Here's Bell. Just making sure Emmy Allen can pick it up with no problem. So how does that help if they're in a four back and you've got your center backs marauding? I love that word, by the way, <laughs> as we've seen. I think it just allows them to continue to keep the width and stretch that diamond apart, pulling. Yeah, Izzy Cox taking matters into her own hands. And a penalty. That's a foul on Duke. Penalty kick on the way for North Carolina. And these are the benefits of having those outside backs. There's space for those outside backs. Cox makes an intelligent run, gets position on Roller, and takes that attacking touch. Roller initiates contact from behind and clips Cox as she's threatening toward goal. Clips her right there on the right foot. So the call on the field was penalty kick. But this is a good opportunity to remind you that in ACC conference matches, there is experimental video review, which would allow the referee at his discretion to look at three different situations. One is a penalty kick, the other red card, and then the third one, dog so denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity. So Corey Rockwell is going to go have a look at this play. And a reminder that all of those situations, it has to be called on the field to be able to be reviewed. Corey Rockwell is one of the best referees in the game. He's going to take another look at this one. Cox taking those aggressive touches into the box. And I think his decision on the field was correct. Roller clips Cox from behind. Doesn't get any of the ball. The penalty kick is confirmed upon video review. I think you could probably even hear that from Corey. The penalty kick is confirmed, so he was right. But just might as well take a look if there was any shred of doubt. And so now North Carolina will get set. Bobby Church having his own look at it. He might have a different opinion, but call stands was confirmed so North Carolina with a chance to double the lead from the penalty spot the Tar Heels one of two in penalty kicks this season and before they take this it looks like Robbie Church is asking for more of an explanation and he's going to get a yellow card for it Avery Patterson looks to be the Tar Heel to take this penalty. This will be her first penalty kick of the season. Patterson saves! Freeman says, not in my house! Patterson steps up, uses the inside of her foot, and just puts it too close to Leah Freeman. Leah Freeman anticipates, reads it the entire way. It's a quite comfortable save, but that could be the momentum shift that Duke is looking for right now and give them a spark moving forward in the last 12 minutes of this match, pushing to find an equalizer. Huge moment there for Freeman and Duke. Let's see if it does give the Blue Devils a little more life. Goals change games, but so can big time saves like that. And that is what Duke needs right now from their goalkeeper, Leah Freeman. And they've needed that all season long for her to come up with those game changing saves and keep this team in matches where they're struggling, going through a little bit of an attacking dry spell. Now, sometimes you just need a moment like that to be the catalyst. And you said it at the start of the broadcast, what better opportunity to have a pivotal turning point in your season than to have 
number one and your biggest rival come to town. That opportunity is still there for Duke. Over 10 minutes remaining in this match. North Carolina taking the lead in the 59th minute. Denied a second goal from the penalty spot. Mia Oliaro making her first appearance in the match, replacing Colton. And Evelyn Shore is back in. You are allowed a re-entry in college soccer in the second half. Oliaro, freshman from Chapel Hill, grew up a big Tar Heel fan, as you might imagine, and is coming off the bench so far in her first year with North Carolina. Valedictorian at Chapel Hill High School, also played with the North Carolina Courage Academy. First penalty kick save this season for Leah Freeman. And to be fair, not that really well taken from Patterson, right? Or what's your take on that, Jill? Yeah. Take anything away from the save. Save's always big, but. It's a great save. In my opinion, if the goalkeeper saves it, it wasn't a great pen. I mean, you're 12 <laughs> yards away from a static position. She didn't get enough placement on it. She tried to bend it around Freeman, but Freeman's large range allowed her to make that save. And ultimately, Duke will feel justified because they felt hard done by that foul. But today, all is fair in love and football. <laughs> is there love between these two teams, or is it all just love lost? I'm not so sure when it's Duke in North Carolina in any sport. <laughs> Shores, and Elgin, keep working, keep working. both on that side of the field. That was Shores. Patterson, too, takes a hard hit. It's going to set up a free kick for North Carolina. easy not in the what? ACC not when it's Duke North Carolina still just a one goal game 730 to play from Koskinen Stadium in Durham diagonal ball into the box North Carolina having to go low for the header but eventually it's out of bounds here is our Week 7 ACC Network Saturday College Football lineup. Virginia Tech hosting Wake Forest at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg at 3.30 Eastern. And at 8 Eastern, the day is capped off by our ACC Network primetime matchup. Number 17, Duke hosting NC State in Durham. A good in-state rivalry matchup there on the football field. And the Allen protecting her area. Trying to hang on to the shutout here for North Carolina. And those are the type of critical moments that I was referring to earlier when Emmy Allen needs to come out, be decisive and very clear with her center backs because Macy Bell or Savvy King could have easily mopped that up, but instead, clear communication from Allen that allows Savvy King and Macy Bell to just impede the run of Raider, creating space for Allen to keep possession. Room to move for North Carolina. Oliaro. Moxley now goes back to Oliaro, who did stay on side. Flicked past by Sentinor. Maybe could have been a little more unselfish there, Ali Sentinor. Come on, 
more at stake in this match for Duke, certainly coming in. A couple things you have to think about. Staying over 500, that's what you need to be eligible for the NCAA tournament, and there is a tough road coming for Duke. Got Clemson also ranked in the top 10. Go to Virginia Tech for State coming up on the schedule. And Duke coming in 5-4-2 right now. They lose this one. They go to 5-5-2, five, five and 3-2 and two in the ACC. Overlap on point for North Carolina. Now the cross, Oliaro! Oh, that had all the makings of a beautiful Tar Heel goal, but not quite on target. North Carolina just is so insistent in creating from these wide areas where they've got numerical advantages. Here at Shores, gets her head up, finds that back post run, actually central run of Oliaro. It's a good decision there for Leah Freeman to not put it out for a corner as it already was going wide. It's got to be so hard, Jill. You have to really make sure you know exactly where you are as a keeper, right? If you decide to pull your hand back from the ball. Once you see out of your peripherals the post and that your hand's going by, if you know it's going out, you can just pull your hand right back and it allows your team to keep possession and not give up a needless set piece. Foul is eventually called. Eighth one against the Blue Devils. You can feel those in the darker shade of blue, ready to get behind this Duke team when they get in the attacking third. Three minutes to go. Devin Lynch coming on to help the Blue Devil attack. It's a very offensive substitution. Lynch in for Piper. And here is Lynch. Number six, she'll be the one to serve this ball in for Duke. This could be one of the best chances of the match right now for the Blue Devils. Leah Freeman, the goalkeeper. She's gonna get up in the mix as well. That tells you how much this means and what this opportunity is for Duke. Here comes the service. Lynch putting it into the box. At the back post, nobody can get it across. And now Freeman better sprint down the field. She's got a long run to go if Emmy Allen chooses to try to take advantage. Her distribution has not been great today, Emmy Allen. She These took short. Too, yeah, she took too long to get that off. Good touch. Maybe still a chance for Duke. It is touched wide, back in front of the goal. And North Carolina just Needs a release. Bailey Brewster. Now out. Freeman to crank it upfield again. I'm here for this late game drama. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially when we get the goalkeeper coming up on a set piece. Getting the player down for North Carolina. So that's Emerson Elgin. Richard, sophomore defender for the Tar Heels. And Elgin is going head to head there with Piper. A Raider for Duke holding her head also. Final minute to decide if Duke has something more to say in this match. North Carolina will hang on for the win. Sneaks across! Oh my goodness! How did that go in? Duke has found the goal they needed with one minute left on the clock.
clock. Duke is going crazy. The Tar Heels are shocked. It's good play here in the wide space. Cameron Roller getting high into the attack. And how is Raider between defenders untouched? All alone inside the penalty area, and it's a glancing header. What an intelligent finish with intention and purpose and thoughts. And it was always going to be Raider for Duke. Draws level. And the Tar Heels are shocked with a minute to go. Wow. Cat Raider with the precision to put that ball away at the stroke of 90, right at 89 minutes on the clock. Her seventh goal of the season. And now how much do you feel the ghost of missed penalties passed if you're North Carolina? Remember the penalty kick from Patterson saved in this second half. Oh, a big collision. Three players go down. Corey Rockwell immediately blows the whistle to go look at them. No foul called on this play. It, just the referee stopping, of course, to check after what appeared to be a head-to-head -head collision. Believe that that is Roller, the player who's down for Duke, freshman defender. I think Avery Patterson was the Tar Heel. She's being helped off now. She's on her feet, but Roller still on the ground for Duke. And you can tell Patterson, she still looks shaken up. Yeah, that was a big hit inside the penalty area. The applause you hear because Roller has at least gotten into a seated position now. Looks like she's going to try to make her way to her feet. Both players now back on their feet, albeit a bit unsteadily. This is the play. Both players going in hard for the ball. Patterson maybe a little bit late. Both players were just looking up at the ball and running from di different directions, which ultimately caused the collision. Neither really saw each other. They're blindsided, essentially. Talk about a dangerous spot to have a drop ball. So Duke's going to get the ball here, dropped back into play. They were the team that had possession when the whistle was blown. Roller, you can tell there at the sideline, getting ready to come back in. Had to come off after being looked at. I think she will need to be waved in by our referee, Corey Rockwell. The good news is Patterson looks like she too is ready to come on. Both teams at the moment then, down a player. You know these rivals are going to battle and fight until the end. Actually, no, maybe it did look like Duke had made a sub. So Devin Lynch had come on for a roller. That's the confusion at the moment. Roller's wanting to come back in, but the sub was allowed. 
46 seconds remain in this one. Now, no sub was put on the board for North Carolina, which I would think would mean Patterson should be able to come right back in. Roller can't until there's another substitution opportunity. So, yes, here comes Patterson back on the field. Roller, because Duke made the substitution, will have to wait it out on the sideline. Under 30 seconds to play in a match that looked like it was going to belong to the Tar Heels now. Duke has evened up in the final minute of play. Cat Raider finding the equalizer. Maybe one final chance for North Carolina. Cox. And this one, Jaloyden, is going to end in a draw. And we talked about.